Remember, the quiet ones always have the darkest secrets. It's time to uncover them on Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi, featuring former prosecutor and defense attorney Eric Faddis. Karen Reed's trial coming up in January, but uh, there's more legal trouble for her on the civil side of things. A civil lawsuit filed by the family of John O'Keefe against her and C.F. McCarthy's on the Waterfall Bar and Grill. You have one where it's basically focusing on, you know, the dram laws and over-serving people, and the other on, well, everything else, uh, including the death of O'Keefe, but in the compensatory damages, uh, losses uh, from John's uh, death, including uh, damage over its conscious uh, pain and suffering, fear of impending death, lost earnings, medical expenses, funeral and burial, burial expenses, as well as lost value of life, which encompasses the loss of society, companionship, comfort, guidance, counsel, net income, services, assistance, protection, care, and advice to next of kin. Punitive, emotional, and uh, interest and costs are there as well. The emotional distress, a big one in the emotional distress part of this, uh, basically because she... It, it, they're, they're saying, look, you were peddling this bullshit story. Uh, and you also then enraged a community by pushing this bullshit con conspiracy story. And now all of these people have been harassed and, you know, emotionally damaged because of you doing this. And she was very media savvy. I mean, she could have easily at any time said, look, please stop harassing people. Stop doing this. I mean, I, I appreciate your support, but don't go do that. Just don't. I mean, but no, it's just like what the ra reality be damned. It kind of became all about Karen Reed. Joining me to discuss Eric Faddis, defense attorney, former prosecutor. Uh, what's your take on the uh, the civil suit and where this may go? You know, uh, emotions have run high in this case almost since the outset, uh, both for um, supporters of John O'Keefe and supporters of Karen Reed. And so, um, you know, I think after the uh, mistrial in the criminal case for Karen Reed, the victim's families were seeking some semblance of justice, some semblance of accountability uh, th th that they didn't get from the criminal side. So here we are in the civil arena, and, and um, there's going to be a lot more to come, a lot of additional evidence on this side that may not have come to light on the criminal side and that could be even be used on the criminal side subsequently. Yeah, there's, there's a, and that's if we get to depositions. What's your take? Do you think we're going to get all the way to depositions on this? Um, obviously, you know, this, is, this has been conscious on both sides of the civil suit coming. They could have settled before it actually made it this far, but nobody has done so yet. Um, and, and they're saying to the judge, hey, you decide what we should be get here. There's not a, uh, a dollar amount attached to it. Um, but yeah, I mean, you get into the, the weeds on this. You have a lot of things that come out in those depositions if we, in fact, get that far. Or will there be a settlement earlier? Yeah, no. So it's um, uh, this case, I think, is less likely to settle, probably because the um, in, in the civil context, usually settlements are paid by insurance companies. In this case, it might be an auto insurance company. But Karen Reed's auto insurance is not is likely not above a million. And, and I'm sure the plaintiffs are seeking millions upon millions for all of the listed harms that you mentioned earlier. And so um, even if her auto insurance company were to pony up their entire policy, I'm not sure that would be enough to satisfy the plaintiffs. And I imagine that the case would continue to go forward. And we may even see depositions, interrogatories, requests for admission, subpoenas, that kind of thing. Will an insurance company pay out on this? Because she was clearly drunk driving. I mean, and I know sometimes there's, there's caveats in those policies where you do that yourself. We're sorry. You chose to do this. We're not going to pay for you. But here's the thing. She's never charged with drunk driving. None of that was never a charge. So I guess one could say that's just, I don't know, hearsay? Because it was, there was never a charge there. Would you have to have the charge of drunk driving in place for the insurance company to be able to deny that? You wouldn't have to, but it would be um, it'd be helpful to have it in place for the plaintiffs. The insurance company, I'm a little biased because I do this kind of work as well, but yeah, the yeah. insurance company is going to take every opportunity to slither out of, of, of trying to pay for, for things uh, like this usually. And I think the insurance company is going to take the position that, hey, there's it's never been established in a court of law that Karen Reed caused the, this, uh, this death. Mm. And there's not adequate evidence to believe that. Now, on the civil side, the threshold is much much lower than proof beyond a reasonable doubt. It's it's a preponderance, more likely than not. And so that burden could help the plaintiff. That's interesting. Of course, uh, CF McCarthy's and the waterfall uh, also named in this. Um, 
what sort of repercussions could these, you know, this stuff happens, you know, somewhat frequently, I guess. I think it depends on your area uh, and what the, the customs of drinking are, not necessarily the laws of drinking are. This is an area that drinks a lot. Um, I'm from Wisconsin. They drink a lot there, too. Um, and quite honestly, if these laws were enforced, bars wouldn't be in business um, because that's how they work. It, it, if they're only serving everybody, you know, a drink an hour or something like that, which they're supposed to. And I mean, there's fucking bars in depending on the state where it's double bubble and it's like two drinks at the same time. You can double <laughs> fist it. You're like immediately going over the limit. Um, and one of the or second round, here's another. You had four in the course. So uh, what what repercussions do you think we're going to see for these these bars other than some fines? I mean, is this really going to affect them all that much? You know, um, I, I remember when I was in college at, at Colorado State University and there was a bar that had a deal on Thursdays, four for ones. And so you get like a <laughs> rum and coke and they give you four of them. And that's your first round. And so uh, the, these these uh, establishments have to be careful. So certainly their insurance policies, there'll be a claim against those policies. And the, 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 I think those claims are more likely to be paid than Karen Reed's insurance paying. Yeah. Uh, but but it could affect their liquor license. It could affect their insurance rates. Certainly there's an optics, a PR uh, a piece to this that doesn't look good for the bars if they contribute in some way to the death of this police officer. Yeah, I mean, I guess it will probably depend too on what their history is, how many times they've had this come against them. After a certain point, I don't know what the laws are there in Massachusetts, but I would imagine, I mean, in most states, it's, you know, you get so many of these uh, complaints, uh, you lose your license. Yeah, they, they, they can shut you down. And even for um, in Colorado, even for like serving to a minor and stuff mm -hmm. like that, when there are multiple offenses over time and there aren't uh, re, re, uh, remedies that, that the bar imposes, that bar could be out of business. And both of these bars could be out of business, especially with how large these claims are going to be against their insurance policies. Their insurance carriers could drop. Them. Yeah. All thanks to Karen Reed. And who's maybe. out there? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, allegedly, <laughs> you know, all out there, you know, with the smiles and signing autographs and hugging people and your boyfriend's dead. And somehow this is like some weird celebratory community building exercise uh, out there with those folks. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm not saying she's guilty. I'm not saying she's innocent. I just think the weird public uh, outcry surrounding this is done by a lot of very unhealthy people. It's it's been um, at an unusual level, certainly not something we see in most cases. Fanatics there, there have been some fanatics there uh, in favor of Karen Reed, and um, you know, is that part of the momentum she has after this acquittal? And is it going to carry over into the next criminal trial? Uh, well, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, it'll be fascinating to watch. Let's be honest. Nothing kills the thrill of a good murder mystery like a commercial for laundry detergent. It's like someone slapping a closed sign on your favorite dive bar. But you're not here for that, are you? You're here for the good stuff. So ditch the ads and upgrade to True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple podcasts with true crime today premium plus you get your crime straight no chaser commercial free with extended interviews and early access it's like getting the bartender's special when the bar's already closed search for true crime today premium plus on apple podcasts subscribe and drink it all in